Recently, I was included in a class action lawsuit against OpenAI. Now, I was referenced in this lawsuit and they took quotes that I've done previously as part of this. The lawsuit accuses OpenAI of illegally scraping and using data to train their models and also in gross negligence in how they've been building out artificial intelligence and its capabilities. What they've included from me is quotes that I've given about polymorphic malware and how AI is going to change it. Before we get started, I just want to quickly say I'm not for or against this lawsuit. I'm only being included as an expert and they're taking testimonial and quotes from me that I've made. Now we've got that out the way, I thought I'd make a video on what the fudge is polymorphic malware, considering that this has become part of a pretty big class action lawsuit. So what is polymorphic malware? I'm so glad that you asked. Polymorphic malware is essentially malware or viruses, if you want to think of it like that, that is able to manipulate itself or transform itself after it's been installed or during the installation process. Now, this is really important based on how we detect malware and viruses. Traditional detection tools use something called signature-based detection. Now, what this means is that when we're looking for malware, we're looking for known patterns of malware. Now, one way that we could do this is we could scan entire files for large chunks of code, but this would take huge performance abilities to be able to do this. So instead what we do is we fingerprint the code or we create a signature of the code. So we take known malware, we create a signature of it, which is typically something that what we call a hash. It's a series of letters and numbers that is between kind of 30 and 250 characters long, depending on the algorithm that's used. And when we scan for malware, what we do is we create fingerprints of all of our files on, on the system and we compare that with the fingerprints in a database. This is a much more efficient way of scanning for malware. However, what if the malware was able to change itself? And this is in its essence what polymorphic malware is. And it means that it's completely invisible to signature-based malware because it changes itself. One of the earliest examples of polymorphic malware was a really infamous botnet called Stormworm. And Stormworm really propagated itself or delivered itself by pretending to be breaking news inside email inboxes, like claiming a big storm had come over Europe, for example. And what made this so problematic was how difficult it was to spot. And this was thanks to its polymorphic file binder. The worm's executable code actually changed itself every 30 minutes. And this really set the stage for the next generation of viruses or malware that came after it because they all used polymorphic traits within them. Now, some of the most prolific viruses that came after that were ViraLock, CryptoLocker, WannaCry, and Emotet. Now, not all of these were completely polymorphic traditionally, but they all contained elements of polymorphic code that, and that made them very difficult to spot. So this is kind of traditional polymorphic malware, but this isn't really what I've been referencing and what I'm being quoted as. I've been really talking about and kind of terrified about is polymorphic malware based on AI. So if you think about it like this, Traditional malware was malicious code that we delivered onto a computer. Or well, what if we no longer need to deliver, deliver malicious code, we need to deliver malicious AI models. And these AI models can then generate the malware. Now they don't generate the same malware, they can generate malware based on your specific environments, your machines, your activity, even where you are in the world. And it creates completely custom malware just for you. Now, aren't you lucky? <laughs> Traditional malware, while it's just all bad, it really only really presents itself in a number of situations. So for example, a lot of malware that you're discovering at the moment is based around stealing cryptocurrency. If your machine gets infected, but you have absolutely nothing to do with cryptocurrency, the risk for you personally, not talking about propagation and it spreading from you, but the risk to you personally is negligible because you're not dealing with any crypto. And that just goes for crypto specific malware. And that's traditionally how malware has been doing it. Really like it's looking for a specific target, a specific person. It's trying to encrypt files in large companies. If it comes onto your laptop, maybe it's not gonna be the end of the world. This could all change because now if we deliver an AI model, which are getting smaller and smaller and smaller, that has the ability to dynamically create malware based on your activity, 
it could sit in the background and just observe what you're doing, what networks you're connected to. Are you going to various banking sites? What activity are you doing on your computer? And it can make a decision based on your activity. What is the best, most malicious, most impactful malware that it could create for you to try and get as much extortion or money or sensitive data as possible. So this in ascension is what AI-based polymorphic malware is. Say that three times, AI-based polymorphic malware. <laughs> All right, so now that we know what that is, what I was actually referring to and what this lawsuit has quoted me as saying is kind of the next level even beyond that because we're kind of almost at that capability right now. And what I was referring to is the sense that the malware that we're, that could be created in the future could not only be undetectable because it's being customly written, so therefore we have no patents for it, but it could be completely undetectable because it's in a language that has just been created. So think about this. Right now, we've trained all of these AI models to write software in the same way that we write it, right? Humans created Python, the programming language or JavaScript, and it's human readable. It may not look human readable to someone that doesn't know anything about software, but it's human readable to those that know. It's a language, right? And we create it so that we can write it and understand it. And at the moment, this is how AI creates everything, including its malware. But you see, AI systems don't need their malware or software to be human readable. So they could create a completely new language that is entirely more efficient or just entirely obfuscated that no human would ever be able to understand. And it could do this potentially dynamically. So not only are we at the point where it could create its own custom malware based on you, but it could also cre create that malware in a language that no one but that AI model understands, which brings the level of detection to near impossible based on the code itself. So that is the terrifying future of AI-based polymorphic malware in AI languages. Whew. So what do we do about this? Are we all completely doomed? No, of course not. Because as incredibly smart and innovative people come up with these solutions to create AI, we can, of course, come up with innovative solutions to combat it. And of course we will, but it is going to need to completely shift to traditional detection methods that we use. So for example, we have to move completely away from signature-based detection. It's no longer going to be work. It's completely irrelevant now. What we need to move to is kind of two areas. One is behavioral based analysis. That's not looking at the code on your machine. That's looking at what is your machine doing? What information is the programming, is the programs on your machine looking for? The other area is using AI in the same similar way to be able to detect malicious patterns because AI may be the only thing that can understand AI written code in the future. So using these systems to be then analyze and detect what could be potentially malicious code because maybe only it can figure out what it does. So those two ways are how we could potentially detect this. And I suspect we'll probably need a combination of absolutely both. But in doing that, we're moving away from what we could call certain detection, which is signature base, which means that if we find a match, we're certain that this is malicious or the same kind of code that we have to probable detection. Probable detection means that I'm analyzing the behavior of this application on your machine, and I think it's probable that it is malicious. What that means is that we're going to have a whole lot more false positives and false negatives. And here aligns the, the, the issues that we always deal with in cybersecurity is how fine do we tune our detection? Because we don't want it to block us from using it every day, because then it becomes an annoyance and we will probably turn it off. But we also don't want the opposite. We don't want it to... To not detect a true threat. So herein lies the problem of what we're probably going to be dealing with into cybersecurity into the future of probable. Well, that's all that I had for you today. I'll drop some links in the description wherever you're listening to this. I hope you found this video useful. And of course, do me a favor, please subscribe to the channel, like this video. I will be making lots more content like that. And I would really appreciate it if you could help us out with that little. All right, until next time. Thanks very much.